Hello and welcome to the Raptor Show on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. I'm your host, Alex Wong, filling in for Will Liu, who is vacationing in parts unknown. He's actually in Banff right now, so go find him. A reminder, we're streaming live on Sportsnet's YouTube channel, airing live on Sportsnet 360, Monday to Friday from 2 to 3 p.m. So it's Friday, and on the Friday Raptor Show, we like to go off script a little bit sometimes with Will. And when Will's not here, we go even further off script. And I'm joined in studio by Ennis Esmer, hey, who hey. is the, uh, what do you call it? What, what should I introduce you as? Inventor of Spice and Dice. Sure. The nickname. I like that. That works. Yeah. And Tom Henry, comedian Tom Henry. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Tom, how are you doing, man? I'm good. It's an honor to be here. Yeah. You're a longtime listener of Fan590. Right? Longtime listener wearing these shades in honor of a certain past right, person right, right, who right. did his show here. Did right. we not say his name? Is that a thing? I'm not sure. Um, right. I'll, I'll let you know how many text messages I get today <laughs> from, from the higher-ups. I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers. Yeah, no, please. <laughs> um, I'm already really nervous. Um, but but we're here today to talk about... I actually don't know what we're going to talk about. We have lots of things to talk about. Yeah. Comedy. Oh, yeah. Raptors. Yes. Uh, I know I know. since this is the home of the Toronto Blue Jays, Tom recently did a... Actually, was a, was a stand-up special recent? or? Uh, it came out... I don't remember. Yeah, okay. 2020. 2020. Yeah, 2020. I'm not your manager. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> 66 jokes. It came Everybody out in the height of the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah, 66 jokes. Check that out on Crave. Or, 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 or Tom Henry Kills. Or Air Canada. Yeah, at, at, <laughs> on Spotify. For people that don't know, that is the pinnacle of Canadian show business when you're on an Air Canada flight, when you're moving. Is that right? It, comedy is, special. Is that when you've made it? That's like, yeah, that's because that's when people watch Canadian stuff is when they're on a plane. I do get more messages from the Air Canada watches then. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get like, hey, your movie's on here, but I'm watching like Mission Impossible instead. What's the, uh, what's the basketball equivalent of making it onto the, to the flight? Like making the playoffs? Mm. Or maybe like a cover, like a Sports Illustrated cover. Oh, okay, okay. So it, in cover story in stores now. Yeah, cover story in stores now. Yeah. Buzzer um, beater. So yeah, no, I think a buzzer beater is. Good. Yeah, yeah. It's a big deal. Canadian show business is a big deal in general. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, I thought you meant like getting onto your flight when you're running late. <laughs> <laughs> Just being able to make the flight. Yeah, that's the buzzer beater. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I like that. No, that's a that's a good comp. Like um, a regular season buzzer beater. Okay. Yeah, yeah like something in February. Yeah. 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 Okay. Orlando pre, pre Magic. trade deadline. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, against the Orlando Magic. Yeah, I like that. No, I like this very specific. It shows off to a roaring start. <laughs> uh, so without Will here, you know, this is the Raptor show with Will Lou. So we are obligated to talk about the Raptors. Let's do it. Con contractually. So I did ask the, the both of you to have a take about the Raptors. And, and Tom did say before the show that he's got a hot one. So Tom Henry... What is your Raptors take that you want to bring on the Raptor Show program? I think mine is going to alienate a large portion of your listeners. Uh oh. Okay. That's great. But yeah. that's kind of what this is all about, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah like yeah. the hotter, the meaner, the worse. Like, you know. Yeah. That's how radio you works. You just watched the movie Private Parts and now you're like rare yeah, to go yeah. or talk I'm, radio. I had to get ready for this. Yeah. Um, burn it all down. All right. You want my take? Mm hmm. Okay. I've, I've said this for a long time. I'm from Toronto. I say the Raptors are not Canada's team. They're mm. Toronto's team. Okay. Expand on that. I want to hear this. Well, everybody wants to, uh, you know, everybody's uh, talking crap about Toronto all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, oh, you're from Toronto. Oh, you know, I hate Toronto. Oh, have you been there? No. But anyway, everybody hates Toronto. Uh, everybody hates the Leafs. Mm -hmm. But then as soon as they don't have their own team, they use ours. That's fair, though. I like this. This is spicy. Yeah. This is hot. You're saying, like, don't don't claim it if you're not from Toronto? Well, how are you going to hate the Leafs and then love the Raptors and the Blue Jays? Yeah, you're saying it's a little bit contradictory. Yeah. They're being hypocrites. Hypocrites. Okay. Wow. But what about, like, so you're wearing a world championship shirt, 2019. I am. I so, just... Ennis, like, during the championship run, yeah. we saw the Jurassic Parks. Yeah. Not just here in Toronto, all, all across the country. Yeah. Like Tom mentioned, everybody kind of adopted the Raptors, yeah, you know, across Canada as their team. I, I don't have a problem with that. Just, no, what, I know. What do you, I don't think, have what do you Tom, think about Tom's, Tom's take on this? Dark, dark worldview. <laughs> leave the Raptors alone. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so we're just gonna we're just gonna punt Tom's take out of here. No, no, no. I like it. It's revolutionary. Here's what I'm gonna say. But it's dark, you know. They yeah. can enjoy it a little bit. Okay, but not a lot. Right, right. Yeah. But there's no other team so in Canada level. though. They have to be able to watch like. The, That's just tough. I don't know. 
But that's even the players take pride in that being like the only team in the country. They say that they do. I don't think they care, do they? I think so. They actually care. I mean, athletes, you know, you want to perform for people and uh, and, and impress you're, you're saying them. you take everything athletes say at face value? Not everything. Okay. No. Yeah. But I think that's one of those things that seems like, I don't know, I like the idea if that's what it is. Jeez, Tom, you're really tearing down institutions. <laughs> By the way, did they, are our uni did they make our uniforms red because of Canada? Yeah, I mean, they've always wanted red. Yeah. Just yeah. like represent. But like at the very beginning when the Raptors came here, and you guys know, they, they had the purple jerseys, the, the dinosaur. Yeah. yeah. Because Jurassic Park was really popular at the time, they they were trying to push against having red. Right. So like John Bitov Jr., the the original owner, really wanted to go against the grain. Like he didn't want like you know to to represent the country. He wanted the Raptors brand to basically be like international, like he, expand beyond Canada. He was on my side. He was on your side. This guy's a legend. What's his name yeah. again? John, John Bitov Jr. Like the, the, the first, the guy who brought the Raptors to Toronto, John Bitov. I don't yeah. know. I was like eight. <laughs> 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 but but you're but okay. So what you're saying is, people from across the country can enjoy the Raptors a little bit, but only a little bit. A little bit. Okay. What are they supposed to follow? Just pick an American team? Uh, whatever they want. I don't know. <laughs> Just another, another thing. Leave our team alone. Take a hobby. One of the, maybe they can use one of the uh, minor league teams they have. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. A G League team. Yeah. Well, okay. No, I like what that. about the Greater Toronto Area? Like, can what if you go north? Can Chatham claim the Raptors? I want to. More. I want to say no. <laughs> we're gonna need. We're gonna need to pull out a map and have Tom draw out the cutoff. Yeah, we need a demographic for, for, map for where, what it's like. Yeah. where you're allowed to be a Raptors fan. I yeah. like that one. Ennis, what does your Raptors take today? I, mean, I know you're, you're a diehard Raptors fan. Yeah, I think um, I, I want to see this. Uh, mine's nothing near what yours is, but you know all this talk that happens every off season about like who needs to be traded. I want this team all to be signed to long-term contracts, and I want to see how it goes. I think it's because we won a championship that I'm not pressed about it anymore. But, like, I don't you want to see how far this specific team can go as opposed to having new guys come in? Like, there's talk about, like, trading Fred yeah. this offseason. Like, that might be a move. How could you do that? That's like ripping out. Oh, man, you actually want to talk about basketball? Okay, the heart of the team. Yeah. And is here with his real basketball. <laughs> no, but... <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever Meanwhile, listened? you're like starting a weird new cult <laughs> yeah. of Raptors exclusionists. Have you ever listened to the show on Fridays? What's I just wanted on? to say I want this team to stay together for a long time. Okay, yeah, because you know, what I mean? you know what? That's a good point because there's been a lot of trade rumors. Yeah, and, and the most OG suddenly. Yeah, OG's the most recent going. one is around OG and yeah, Jake, Jake Fisher from Bleacher Reports yeah. reporting it, and he reported today too that uh, many of the Raptors are dissatisfied with their role. Rubbish. What does that mean? Yeah. I mean, it's not rubbish. Well, what, Jake is, talks to people around the league. It's still rubbish. So you're just simply not accepting the premise that some of these players on the team might not be happy with their role. Yeah, I'm in denial about okay. uh, non-Toronto sports media being able to report on the Raptors. Mm. There you go. I'm, do I'm going that way. Okay. Leave nice. our Raptors alone. We're building, a, we're building a wall around Toronto. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> no, but is that true? Is there, Did it come from his camp? I know I listened to when you were talking about, like, all those rumors come from somewhere. Yeah. But who stands to gain? Yeah, well, I think... I think I wouldn't push I would push back against the fact that like everybody's happy with their role on a team. Like yeah. you know, I, I think the way the way that Nick Nurse coaches the team, the way that he sets his rotations and guys, some guys get opportunities, some guys don't. Right. But see that I wouldn't be mean... surprised that some guys, you know, would want a bigger role. But like, okay, bigger role is one thing, but why does it have to lead to trade talk? That's what I'm saying. It should lead to like you deal with that in house, you figure it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's no, awesome. that's fair. And, and I'm I'm with you too. You know, I yeah. think there is a lot of potential with this team yeah and I'm, I'm with you that we should we should kind of see it through and let them grow for the yeah. next couple of years i'd like to offer a contrarian view and say yeah, that there we go <laughs> oh, God. trade everybody i'd like to say we should get all the best players in the league <laughs> unbelievable <laughs> would you have been happy with that paul george russell westbrook trade i think when Kawhi was leaving and they were saying we have to get paul george we yeah. should have just got him and i mean and kept Kawhi. i, I mean and, not and the way westbrook. it's gone but. westbrook was supposed to be part of that too allegedly that was the rumor that might not have gone so it was well. like siakam and fred and og for uh westbrook and and uh george and then we get to keep Kawhi. that would have been a crazy team well Kawhi was trying to do the superstar thing that lebron does kevin durant does and basically just run the team right yeah but would he have actually stayed if we got Paul George, or was he just using it to go over there? I like to think that it was just more leverage. Yeah. The thing that upsets me about Kawhi leaving, yeah. you know, aside from the fact that he left, uh, <laughs> is that I think for him, like, there's all this talk about him wanting to go home to L.A., and I get all of that. But 
I think everyone was just asking him to come back for one more one year. More. One more one year. More. That's it. And then you could go home. Plus, yeah. you just won a championship. And the thing that really bothers me is like I feel like he looked at this team after they won the championship and didn't think they were good enough. Crazy. Like if you think about it, like he wanted to make these trades, yeah. right? Wanted Paul George here, and he ended up teaming up with him in LA. So he picked a situation that was better for him personally, but I think he thought he picked a better basketball situation. And he did not. And then you look at the Raptors, and they played so well the following year. He Pandemic slowed them game, down. Fifteen games in a row without him. Yeah, fifteen. One would games argue in a row. he made our team worse. That's not. <laughs> No, no, these takes are... These that's takes a take. Are that's, yeah, a that's a take. Kawhi Leonard made our don't, team uh, worse. <laughs> don't, don't rate and review We the won the championship yet. in spite of Kawhi Leonard. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So that, that's your second Raptors take? <laughs> yeah. No, that's Ennis's. <laughs> that's my take, yeah. No, no, no. So let's do a yeah. quick run now. So Thomas said, unless you're from Toronto... <laughs> the GTA Yeah, yeah, proper. the GTA The mega city can cheer for the you, Raptors. You can't, root, you can't root for the Raptors. I actually grew up pre-mega city, so... Yeah. But go on. So you've seen it all. You've seen it all. But listen, Tom, I was mentioning, so you did have your... Stand up special, 66 jokes. Everybody should check it out. And this being Sportsnet, the home of the Toronto Blue Jays, you did have a bit in, in your stand up about baseball. So, so we do have this clip here. So let's listen to this clip. I was at this uh, poetry reading the other night um, by accident, and um, <laughs> afterwards I saw this guy come up to one of the poets, and he was like, uh, he was like Oh man, you really knocked it out of the park. And I wished I could see that the other way around. Like, I wish I could see, like, a baseball player hits a home run. And one of his teammates comes up to him and he's like, uh, Oh, man. You really wrote and performed a very boring poem. I like to watch baseball, so I stream it on the internet. But uh, there's always like this point where I have to figure out like, um, like if my stream froze, um, or if I'm just watching baseball. <clears throat> it's a slow sport. So first of all, Take that baseball! Amazing. I thought have... you were just gonna play the whole damn special on the air. <laughs> we should. What 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 do you have against uh, just poetry? I love poetry. It's great. Okay. You do a bunch of poetry later in the special, don't you? Uh, yeah, haikus? I do some haikus. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, like, I think poetry is probably like everything. The the good stuff is good, but the bad stuff is really bad. Okay. Same S as comedy and yeah, same comedy. as uh, any field. Yeah. Sports radio. Yeah, sports radio. Okay, careful. <laughs> careful what you say. Shouts to our producer, Derek Brendale. But yes, baseball. So you consider, ba is baseball the most boring sport to you? Is that what, you, is that what you're saying? I actually love baseball. I'm wearing a Jays hat. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was That's, just, I was just making jokes. Okay. <laughs> I was thinking the irony of like the, slow, the slowest delivery comedian making fun of a slow sport. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, what's boring to watch? Darts? No, you're crazy. Darts are incredible, though. Have you ever watched televised darts? Yeah, the guys are pretty fun, they're actually. The commentators are screaming. It's yeah, like I guess the, you're right. They're, they're on the edge of their seats. Everyone's drunk. It's crazy. You know what's the most exciting sport on TV that's always guaranteed entertainment? Poker. I'm serious, though. Uh, Have you ever flipped to a poker in sports? I broadcast a lot of poker. Yeah, that's true. I got, I got tired I, of oh, it. Oh, every time I flip to poker, I watch. You do? Because I love poker. Do you learn anything when you watch? No, clearly not. <laughs> Because the uh, three of us are part of the uh, NS Esmer Poker Invitational. Yeah, the Poker Invitational. takes night in place. Canada. Yeah. But well, I do Saturdays. It does make sense because there was a time when you got busted out of the game, probably by Ennis's flush or something. <laughs> oh, yeah. There was a, remember when I had that flush and I didn't even know it? Yeah, when you slow rolled that flush. Yeah. By accident? Yeah, yeah Ennis time. throws his cards down. He's like, I've got nine high. Oh, wait, I have a flush. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I have nine high. Actually, I have a nine high flush. Uh, but when you were out, you were running around trying to look at everybody's whole cards, like as if it was a TV show. Yeah. Because it's exciting. Yeah. I, I love That's, that. The hold cam really does make it a thing. No, I'm saying we should install hold cams at your place. All right. I mean, you've already got a great selection of lights. That's true. At your place, <laughs> which is just wonderful. Yes, but yeah, I poker. Do. Okay, so baseball, I just got to push back because like, actually, why am I pushing back? Do I, it, do I, it. I, took my, I took my nephew to a Jays game last, yeah. last week and he fell asleep by the fourth <laughs> inning. Yeah. So. It is long. It's yeah. really long. But I think baseball, when you go, like, if you're going to rank live events in terms of sports, I haven't been to a lot of hockey games, but hockey live is really exciting to me. Yeah. Basketball I put up there. But mm -hmm. basketball is more of work for me now, so I kind of look at it differently. 
Yeah. Baseball, I don't mind because I feel like it's it's versatile. Like it's it's just a social gathering. You don't need to be paying attention all the time. Yeah. I, I see value in that. It it kind of just depends on who you're there with. If you yes. like the if you like the person you're there with, baseball's good. Yep. <laughs> if you don't, baseball's bad. Yes. So baseball of all the sports is most like company dependent. Right. I'd say yeah. so. Yeah. But also there's different ways in which a baseball game can be amazing. Like sometimes if there's like a, sh- a like two pitchers throwing shutouts and you're like it's in the 8th inning and it's been an hour and 20 minutes, that's impressive too, like that it's moving so quickly. You know what I mean? I find that to be to be uh, exciting as well. Yeah. <laughs> like those people didn't there was a guy who threw like a perfect game or a no-hitter against the Jays here. Yeah. People are like, "I got to see a perfect game." Yeah. But you got to see just your whole team never get a hit. <laughs> Yeah, but that's impressive. You have I was to look there at for like... history, but the history is that. But it's still you're... history, though. Yeah. I feel like I'm just pushing back on, on all of Tom's. No, takes. you know what's crazy, though? I will watch, like, if the, for a Jays game, if the Jays are losing, I can't watch the Jays pitching. Right. Like, I can't, I, unless we're up. Unless it's Alec Manoa, which I'll watch, no problem. Like, he, he'll, him I'll watch, uh, or Gosman, maybe, but Manoa especially. But I can't watch, I can't watch when the, when the Jays aren't hitting, because all they can do is give up runs. Right. You know what I mean? So that's a, there's no other sport like that. Like, would you turn off a, a Raptor game every 20 seconds every time they're on defense? You know what I mean? No, I would Doesn't never. Have the same paradigm. Because I work on the Raptor show. I feel like we got to talk about basketball. <laughs> yeah, let's let's. How how do we switch it to basketball? Let me think about this. So you're a comedian, yeah. right? It's Alleg- been it's allegedly. been established. It's 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 been established. What what do you think about NBA players and athletes? And I guess the person I'm thinking of, like, I remember a couple of years ago, I went to see Blake Griffin. Yeah. In Montreal, I think it was during Just for Life. You saw him do stand up. Yeah, yeah, I was actually doing a story on him, so like I was there and like talked to him a little bit about it. What, what do you think as a comedian? How do comedians feel about athletes getting into the comedy space? Because, I mean, don't take this personally, but like, look at you. I'm like, you're not gonna be in the NBA. I'm, whereas I'm they can do it. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean, though. Like, whereas they can use their stature. How dare you invite me here and then tell me I'm never making the NBA? <laughs> Your stature. You know, they they use their stature and their fame. To, to kind of go into this field. Yeah, I actually hate it. Yeah? They do it once and everybody loves them much more than they love me. Right. They're like, who's this guy? Yeah. Who's been doing it 13 years. Because I feel like for athletes going in, just because they have that profile, yeah. the, the expectations are lower, right? I was at the oh, festival course. that year too that Blake Griffin did it and he was lounging all around the hotel, so confident. I thought you should be nervous. You're doing something you, you don't really do. Yeah. But, but he, he just has the confidence of an athlete. I guess that's all you really need. Yeah, the pressure's off, right? What's the worst thing that happens? He doesn't get laughs. He's still Blake Griffin. After and, and he just will get laughs because, yeah. you know, it's a big building. Yeah. <laughs> it's just someone's laughing. No, they have like a, it's like a home court advantage for them. Just oh, yeah. because of like who he is, right? Yeah. I've, you, I've just always been curious, like how comedians feel about that. Because like, I know obviously a lot of you guys work really hard to, to get into this field. And then here's your headliner. Yeah. NBA player. I think PK Subban tried it too, right? Really? I think so. I don't know. Or he that. hosted a gala or something. Yeah. Yeah. I'm against it, all of it. <laughs> so, <laughs> what do you mean, anybody branching out? <laughs> yeah. Are you against people in general exploring yourself. their interests? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Or having like, everyone a stays on. strictly in their lane <laughs> at all times. Yeah. Do you do you as do you as comedian get a lot of material just from like watching sports? I mean, we played that bit and it was like, you know, about poetry, about baseball. Because I, I find there's a lot of just hilarity um, in sports. Yeah, Especially sometimes. in the NBA. I find the NBA to be just hilarious. Yeah. I had a basketball one once. There was, a, I saw an ad on the side of a streetcar that said, Canada is basketball. And I thought, oh, I've been living in basketball this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's the conclusion that many people draw. <laughs> Ennis, where do you, where do you stand on? Because, you know, you're, you're one of the best actors. Um, in the world. You know, in the world. Yeah. It and, says it on the screen. And, and, you know, Blake Griffin's gone into acting. We've, we've seen, you know, LeBron James is building his own little empire in Hollywood. Blake Griffin's doing the acting, too? Yeah, he was in Broad City. Yeah, he was on Broad City. He was yeah. funny on Broad City. Somebody's got to stop this it was, guy. It was, it was uh, um, racy what he did on, on Broad City. Is this why he doesn't dunk anymore? <laughs> well, no, he's also got knee problems, I think. Yeah, he's gotten old. Yeah. The devil is like, if you give up dunking, I'll give you nominal acting and comedy talent and a sag union membership <laughs> and he made the trade that's a good deal no i mean i got i i don't have the tom's same thought about it because like i feel like <laughs> who has the same thoughts as tom Henry, i don't think though? anybody i don't think anybody but you know i'll say this though like 
I think I, I could retire from acting if I somehow got like, like an eastbound and down type job. Anything where I was playing a baseball player, it would be a wrap. I could, I could stop acting. I think I'd be like fully uh, fulfilled creatively. So have, I get, have you done any like sports related roles? No. Oh, or well, gone I mean, for any sports related roles? Uh, on the show uh, Red Oaks, streaming on Amazon. Yeah, which I promise. Which, which I promise I'll watch. Hey, you don't day. have. You know, it's too late. It's canceled. So it's not like you're gonna help us get back. Did it have here. a good ending though? Or did it oh, end properly? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Tom, you watched it, right? Yeah. Yeah, sure I did. <laughs> yeah, you saw that. You yeah. saw so that. So Red Oaks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I played like a washed up tennis pro, but I didn't ever have to actually play. Right, but, you know what I mean. So that was the closest I came to being anything athletic in a in a show or movie. You took lessons anyway, though, right? I did take lessons at the beginning, just to and just to kind of observe the the tennis pro was such a a jerk. It was unbelievable. Speaking of confidence, like he just had like tennis pro country club energy that I was like, oh, I'm not like this. Oh, this was part of your prep. Yeah, yeah. They the had role. his train because like the the Craig Roberts, who's the lead of the show, he actually had to play tennis. Like a lot of, a lot of the story arc of the first season is him training Paul Reiser's character, who's like the evil uh, uh, board chairman of the of the um, the country club whose daughter he's dating. It's a great time. It's a really good time. There's a lot of tennis montages and stuff like that. But yeah, that's the closest I've ever come. I but, mean, Nick uh, Nurse. Nick Nurse has gone into acting as well. That's true. That's true. That show has... Like, Stephen Harper was on Murdoch Mysteries. They'll put anybody on that you, show. Were you on Murdoch Mysteries A couple before? times, yes. Okay. Yes, I was. I played a, uh, uh, a rascally, uh, a, like a boudoir photographer. Yeah, it was great. It was yeah. a good time. How about Nick Nurse and all his rock and roll? Yeah. With Are the you art, mad about the... that? Well, <laughs> you think he's just, he should yeah. stick to coaching? Stick to coaching. <laughs> so get good at one thing, and that's it. And just, like, don't try to expand yeah. it all. Listen, I feel like I'm going to get... You a, act. I'm going to get Why a lot of uh, hate mail here, but do the Arkells have to play every sports show? Every uh, every time the sports is on TV, there's an Arkells performance? <laughs> but I think this is what happens in, like... um not just even in the music scene, but, like, you see it in, like, Canadian sports media, too. People just latch on to the same, like, few people. That's why this once guy's in every show. Stage. Hey. Yeah. I mean, once Oh, sure. Had, I didn't know I was describing Ennis' Once you've had the best, and then we'll put the best up on the screen there. Is it coming up? Is that coming up? All right. Never mind. But it's funny because we talked about this last time. I won't get your take on this, too, Tom. So, like, Ennis has, you know, accomplished a lot in his career. <laughs> Some but, would say. Yeah, but I've never seen him as excited as when he came up with the Spice and Dice nickname oh, yeah. for Pascal Siakam and Fred Van Vliet, and it was mentioned on air by Matt Devlin. It was the f first time I texted him probably in months when I heard it on the yeah, Raptors yeah. broadcast. Oh, I had people, te yeah, 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 more people blew that up than any time I've yeah. ever, like, had a TV show premiere or anything like that. I don't know, there's something different about that. It's because it's sports. You want to uh, touch that intangible, ephemeral thing that being in sports is. That's why I think... We could never do that. So maybe the part of the this part of the Blake Griffin resentment come from that because you can't go the other way. Well, I mean, like I, I mean, say, you, I you were planning to before. Alex I still said might, that. yeah, I still <laughs> might make it. You've said your piece. <laughs> no, I think um, I think it's cool though. It speaks to it speaks to your fandom too. Yeah, that you would just still geek out about that. Well, sure. I mean, having like sports cat that doesn't get old. Like that's from childhood. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's not even. Like meeting athletes, or as opposed to like meeting other actors or comedians, is a whole other thing. Like I can barely talk to athletes if I see one try to like strike up a conversation. Those guys are the best entertainers too, like Matt Devlin, Jack Armstrong. Those guys, yeah, and and gals um, are like you respect them as a as an entertainer. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because they're like they're doing more than I, I could ever do. I mean, the fact that it's happening live is yeah, and you just like to consider how much goes into that job. And then even the like, you know, broadcasters you might not like that aren't that great at it because it happens in everything, right? Or it's still impressive to be able to pull that up, especially in a sport that moves as fast as basketball. You know what I mean? In baseball, you could talk about, like, you know, the concept. I remember Dan Schulman being like, oh, that's a good-looking roast beef. We're going to get that tomorrow for lunch and the pitch is outside. You know, like, stuff like that happens, but you don't have that, that leeway in basketball. Yeah, Matt is such a – he's, like, part of the Raptors product, right? Oh, like, sure. when people watch the games and then they watch the broadcast – like they it's a familiar voice and he does a great job yeah and i'm totally with tom like it i don't know like so actually should i say this oh yeah so there's a ccya tournament this uh coming up celebrity tournament that jeremy lynn simu lu is going to be a part of and we're going to talk about it on next week's show yeah and will is actually going to be doing play-by-play -play. Will. oh will, no way yeah so he's he, he's slated to um if i said this on air too early clement my bad um but like <laughs> He, I'm actually going to be away because the original plan was going to be me and Will were going to do the play-by-play -play for oh, the no, tournament. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, that would have been fun. But Will's still going to still going to do it, and I'm actually really curious how he's going to do, because I was thinking about it. Like like Tom was saying, like the live play-by-play, -play, that's really hard. Yeah, 
Did I pronounce his name right? <laughs> <laughs> I think he's got the no know, the know how and the you know the intensity to really follow it well. Yeah, and you know he, it's funny because watching him like he's definitely come out of his shell more on this show because of you. Like you guys have found a chemistry yeah. that you know when he was doing like when he does like the 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 post game things. That's more X's and O's, but you guys have a thing together. So I would love to listen to that. I'd love to w w uh, watch you guys cover live sports. That'd be amazing. Yeah, that's the that's the tug and pull on the show is that Will's always trying to push it towards basketball, and when Will's not here, I'll have shows like this to make <laughs> him regret ever taking any time off in Banff. Yeah, when he's not here, you can burn the whole show down. <laughs> Now, can I ask you a question? If you travel to Banff, like Will is, um, are you still allowed to follow the Raptors if you're outside of the GTA? <laughs> like, do you have to give up the card? Like, is Will uh, allowed to, to to listen to the Raptor show, which he is doing right this moment? Is it like a severance type situation? No, no, no. You you got your passport. You're oh, good. Okay. Yeah, you're, okay. you're good. You get a special different stamp on your face, a little claw. Yeah. All right, I like it. And then if you move to another city, you got to yeah. live there for like three to five years before you can cheer for that team that uh, that i do resent when people yeah. claim new teams and new places especially if it's new york like the yankees or like the yeah. lakers or dodgers drives me crazy that's nuts like you 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 grew up in toronto and then you moved away oh so you guys are territorial about like the sports fans. when it comes to, i mean i resent the markets of the new york and and la and basketball and all sports really and the attention that they get so i hate hearing about a canadian who moved down there for for acting comedy whatever and then, like, that's their team now. I don't know. It's so it's so childish. But, yeah, that really uh, chaps my hide. Well, there's a guy I know. You might, you might have seen this, too. Nice guy. I know him uh, on Twitter and stuff. But he moved to Philadelphia recently and was doing a lot of oh, Sixers oh, posts. Yeah. I'm like, this, you deserve to be jailed for this. <laughs> we can say who it is, can't we? What are we can't, we'd I don't love know if it. anyone knows or cares. But. Yeah. Wow. I'm, I'm glad we unpacked so much of this. Yeah. It was <laughs> during like, the really Raptors series. He started tweeting about, like, the Sixers. And I was like, get out of here. Yeah. You've been here for a year. I've only really known the two of you by the poker hands that we've played against. Yeah. Now I feel like you guys are like three dimensional beings to me. Yeah, full of, yeah. Full of resentment. <laughs> just, just like full of <laughs> Anyways, I think that's a good spot for us to take a break. I'm your host, Alex Wong, and I will continue to be joined by actor Ennis Esmer, comedian Tom Henry when we come back. You're listening to The Rapture Show on Sportsnet 590, The Fan.
Welcome back to the Raptor Show on Sportsnet 590, The Fan. I'm your host, Alex Wong. I continue to be joined in studio by actor Ennis Esmer and comedian Tom Henry. It is Friday, so Friday means that we give shoutouts. So shoutouts to producer Derek Brandale and Jennifer Rolnick helping us with a YouTube stream, producer Rob, Brian Fabro, Kyle Crabe, Dan Toman, Greg Sansoni, Pat Flash. Shouts to our guests this week, Blake Murphy, Joseph Cacharo, Ennis Esmer, Tom Henry. Those are really all the shoutouts that I have. Do you guys have any shoutouts, Ennis? Shout out! Shout out my stepmother for uh, getting over COVID. Okay. And for my father for not getting it from her. Okay, Dennis. So, it's got serious. Nice. Doing good? No, okay. they're good. They're good. She didn't she didn't have symptoms or anything like that. Yeah. I've been avoiding my father for the last uh, two, three weeks. So I'm gonna hang out with him. I'm looking forward to that. Shout out to that. And shout out to uh shout out. Shout out to Wes as well. Wes Chang. And everybody in the uh, Poker Night in Canada team. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Make this game possible. We're playing. You ready? We're playing tomorrow night? We're okay. playing tomorrow. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay. I'll budget for that. Are you um, still on tilt from last week, from the last game? Yeah, yeah. Yeah? I'm just always li- on living tilt. your life on tilt? Yeah, I'm in general just on tilt. Yeah. <laughs> when I see you, I just see a flush. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's all I see. It is the biggest faux pas I think you can have in poker. Is it's the, fun. I didn't know what I had hand, and yeah. I literally just said, like, just nobody do this, and then I did it. It was, I'm sorry. No, it's fine. You were going through, you know, the different lights options. Look, um, I have, I have smart lights in my house, okay? I'd like to set a mood. <laughs> Yeah, no, and and this is a really nice place. Uh, the address is. Um, Tom Henry, do you have uh, any shout outs you want to give out? Yeah. I'm shout so out, stressed. Shout No. <laughs> shout out to uh, the biggest fan 590 head I know, James Hartnett. Very funny comedian. Okay. And uh, shout out to an old friend of mine who says he listens to the show every day, Colin Craig. Oh, okay. Shout out. Yeah. Damn, appreciate it. I always love to hear from listeners of the show, including you, right, Tom? Tom, you listen to the show. A lot. Sometimes. A lot. Yeah. Not so much these days. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We can tell in the charts. Yeah. We can actually tell. What else? Oh, since since you guys are in the biz, so I'm excited to watch the new Adam Sandler movie, Hustle. Yes. That's uh that's out on Netflix now. It's actually yeah. been getting a lot of good reviews. Um, and you know, just from the five tweets that I've read right. from people praising it. Yeah. He no, plays a, he's a coach. He's, is that what yeah, he's a coach, and like I think Kyle Lowry makes an uh, oh, makes yeah, a right. cameo in it. Yeah, yeah. Sergio it's like Scarillo. a straight ahead sports movie, right? Like it's... yeah, I think it's like an underdog type story. Yeah, he's a scout. He's a scout or a coach, and then uh, Juancho Hernan Gomez is the player that he like spots and tries to get him to the league. Oh, amazing! I think that's the story. Yeah, this is a lot of athletes acting. Yeah, what do you yeah. think? You're, you're gonna you're gonna ban this, this movie. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to make sure it doesn't play in the can- yeah. Canadian region. I actually just noticed. Join, join my political party. <laughs> I discovered this, that you can actually on Netflix, if you thumbs down something, it'll stop suggesting it to you. So you should do that. I did that with the the Pentaveret, the uh, the new Mike Myers thing. Yeah. And it went black and white and then just disappeared from my Netflix. So you can do that. You can do that. Throwing shade on Mike Myers. <laughs> I heard, though, because, you know, one of the bits on here, I guess, is that I love Uncut Gems. Uh, I heard, Tom, you're not a fan of the movie. Oh, no, I what's feel the, like I'm getting in a lot of trouble here. What's no, your, no, no. What's your letterbox review on that? I don't have letterbox. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I write every movie I watch in a, a notes. Me too. Yeah, do yeah, you? Yeah. You know what's funny? Like, I do that too. I, yeah. I rate everything that I watch out of 10. Yeah. I feel like there's enough opinions on the internet. I don't need people's movie opinions too. That's yeah, perfectly Save fair. them for conversations. With if I'm friends. not on one of the things, I just am not going to join it. Cause, yeah. Because joining all the ones I've joined was a mistake. Yeah. Um, you like Uncut Gems, though. I like Uncut Gems. I just right. thought people freaked out about it a little too much. Yeah, sorry about that. And like I said, like... <laughs> no, I'm... Take, take back that apology. <laughs> yeah. Don't get sucked into his vortex. No, I just want to be Tom's friend. <laughs> uh, I said earlier, I'm a punch drunk love guy. I think you have yeah. to pick. You, you have really to pick one of the two? You really don't, but I, for some reason I'm saying you have to. Well, uh, on Adam Sandler, dramatic performances. Oof. Okay, I'm... Uh, that's tough. Because those are two of my like top ten favorite movies of all time. I don't know how to rank one higher than the other one. Oh, by the way, I saw Ennis last night, and I made him a thousand dollar bet. Yeah, what was the bet? Because you thought the Steve Buscemi lipstick part was in Happy Gilmore and not Billy Madison. Yes. So I owe you a thousand dollars. A thousand dollars he owes me. You wow. know how many? You know how many? Um, so uh, he's free rolling at poker for the next year. Yeah. yeah. Now I'm on tilt. I did let him off the hook, and I said, "Just buy me these drinks you already bought me." Yeah. Right. <laughs> That was a that was a sloppy move on my part. That was definitely the I didn't know I had a flush of Adam Sandler movie misquotes. No, show to Adam Sandler. Also, 
More Raptors news, because I'm always steering it back to the Raptors. Yeah. Kyle Lowry is getting his own road. Did you guys see this? Oh, yeah. So In... Kyle Lowry Road is Where happening. is it? Uh, Don Mills Crossing, a northeast co- corner of Don Mills and Eglinton. Oh, that's amazing. It's, it's is that okay? Called, is that acceptable? It's going to be called oh. Kyle Lowry Road. Is that is Sounds that cool with you, Tom? Sounds like a great honor. Yeah. <laughs> They should have given him one of the streets. Remember when they asked him what he likes about Toronto? And he's like, I love walking on University Street or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> Nothing better than university. Oh, yeah. When it intersects I love, with college. I love walking by the hospital. Well, I think it's close to the Cactus Club. That's why. Uh, that's Because that's, cause that's, oh, why, that really that's why? where they all hang that's out. That's where they drive to. Yeah. Right. <laughs> well, I would assume if you're getting an MRI or something, you're getting it at that hospital maybe. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? So maybe they do hang out at that. There's a great Tim's in that... Um, in that pathway, you go down there. Really nice. I'll be sure to check that out. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll all go together after. Anyways, having you guys here, I saw this really funny comedy hey, clip. What's up? Sorry. What's up? Just thought of a joke. Yeah, tell me. Sounds like the uh, Miami Heat might want him to do a few laps around that new road oh, of his. Oh, man. Yeah, we were talking about this yesterday. Yeah. Because Pat Riley had some comments. Oh, what did he say? About Kyle Lowry's conditioning. He basically said that wow. he, he needs to get in shape for next season. And... Yeah, I, I agree with Pat Riley. Is you, he not in shape? I thought he was just hurt all year. What's the problem? I mean, he was hurt, but I mean, the, I feel like throughout Kyle's career, there's always been conditioning issues, even when he was here. Remember when he got jacked, though, when he got svelte that one year? Yeah, mm-hmm. after, after they got swept Yeah, by the Washington Wizards. And he's kind of been like that. I mean, he's just getting older yeah. now, isn't he? That's rude. They don't deserve him. Bring him back. Ah, if there's you, that There's that fandom again. That's baloney. How dare they? I love that. If you just paid me before I had to do the job, yeah, $60 million, then I, you, I would put on all kinds of weight. <laughs> right, right. You already paid me. Yeah. And so, w- so what's the saying, downside? You're going to yell at me on the, in a press conference? So you're saying athletes should be paid per game? Paid <laughs> as they go? I'm changing things around here. Well, aren't yeah. they paid as they go? They don't get paid all of it up front. Yeah, they do, don't they? That would be a signing bonus. No, they get paid yearly. They get checks. But they're guaranteed it as long as they show up. Yeah, they have to show up. Yeah. Show up in, in whatever shape they want. Yeah, right. Round. Well, C- look at James C- Harden, right? Cube. Yeah. No, I respect James Harden because... Every time he's in a work situation that he doesn't like, yeah, he just leaves. He's like Christian Bale for being able to gain and lose weight. Yeah, like <laughs> he got so chunky and then like gets traded and he's like, j- like, yeah, s- svelte the next week. This it's guy's impressive. saying only actors should be allowed to gain and p- and lose weight. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't respect yeah. it. Damn, we're really unpacking a lot. <laughs> Anyways, I, I did. I'm glad, That's my hot take. I'm glad you guys are having a, a great time. This is amazing. Thanks I'm excited. Having. Yeah, I can tell by your voice. I know. Deadpan clan. Um. I did ask, I, I did, you know, one of the things that I do, I like to outsource a lot of work yeah. to my yeah. guests. Yes. I did send you guys an email early this week and yeah. it said, in bold are things that you guys have to prepare for. Yeah. Right. So, so I wanted to, to see if you guys could come up with any um, rule changes or things you would want to change about an NBA game. So let's start with you, Tom. I thought of one. Remember that uh, Mountain Dew ball in the three-point contest? Yeah. They should just have that on the floor at all times. <laughs> On a rack. Yeah, yeah. On that stand, on that Mountain Dew stand where right. they have it. Right, right. yeah. Guys just leave just, it there all year. Yeah. You can grab it if you want. And just take a four-point shot or five, something like five, that. Five, four or five points. Yeah. yeah, I like that. And then it's kind of an obstacle too, you know. Right. If, if you don't want to use it, you got to get around it. Yeah, get, get, yeah right. So, so you're trying, to, tur- you're trying to turn and... the game into like an NBA jam situation. Or like Mario Kart track. I yeah. really love the look of that Mountain Dew ball. It's like this beautiful, bright Mountain Dew green. <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. We're we're, de- we're definitely gonna put that change through. I have yeah, a real one that. too, though. I think they should stop using instant replay. Or uh, you know what? Yeah, replay. That's whatever. a really good one. What What do you not like about replay? It just slows the game. Well, there's down like here. 80 calls every game. Yeah, they're minute. Mm-hmm. So why are we looking at one? Yeah, it doesn't make sense. It's to, it's to protect the referees' jobs because that's that's. That's kind of their fallback, right? That's going to dovetail into uh, my thing here. I, they, yeah. they, 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 I, I am very against the instant replay. Cause Period? I, yeah. I just think it's, like Tom said, that they're using it too much. And for, like, little things, I don't want it in any sport anymore, actually. I just find it, I find it strange for them to have to review whether the play was too physical. Isn't that the ref's job to kind of call that in real time? Yeah. Or why do they have refs? Right. You know what I mean? That's kind of the point. Yeah. And they also never, they never review things where, like, they missed a foul. You know what I mean, if you're going to do that, like there's so many times in a game where they miss a foul call. I just think usually yeah. against the Raptors. They use it on too much. Yeah, there's your fandom speaking yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I just think I just think the refs should be just just do your job. 
and then just have some element of human error. Obviously, if things are if things are wrong, then go and review it. But like right now, they're reviewing every single play. Yeah. Every time someone's getting hit at the basket. Mm-hmm. And it ruins the flow of the game. Oh, for sure. And it was already the flow of the game was already screwed up for late games with like all the timeouts and and uh, purposely fouling people so they get to the free throw line and save time and all that. Which brings me mm. to my proposed changes. Transition. Uh, you know that last two minute report that comes out. Yeah. Refs blowing calls. Yeah. Refs get technicals for missed calls, huh. and like there's I want I want actual consequences for refs to miss calls. Okay. There's like a there's like an equivalent card, and I'm not saying it's a it's a, a crazy job. You know what I mean? They're 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 low. They're only uh, noticed if they screwed up. But I think there should be some sort of a way to to penalize a ref that repeatedly misses calls like, or gets the wrong call. They get a worse dinner that night or something. <laughs> like what's the punishment? Like they get suspended. Oh okay. Oh so they're like on a point system. Yeah, they, they get a wor- they're on a worse flight. <laughs> just yeah right just make like two two connections to get to the next game okay just make it a little harder for yeah. them to, to leave the stadium people yeah, have hide also their, said... hide their clothes hide their <laughs> move their clothes while they're so they can't change out of their ref outfit or they have to ref in like something dumb looking yeah like right dumb clothes now we're talking yeah okay. yeah, yeah. I, I love mean, that's a I, good I love consequence tom's whole theory is just to make sports an obstacle course <laughs> for people yeah he's trying to turn sports into amazing race basically yeah, it should be more entertaining but i mean they, they put out all these reports and there's no consequences there should be consequences. people always yeah. the one thing people always ask for is for refs to actually have press conferences after the game oh i'd love that right i don't know how productive that would be i mean it'd be funny the refs would just be so defensive <laughs> yeah right right yeah like so i don't know if that's a but, but, yes, see, but that could also dovetail into like getting rid of the instant replay. If you miss calls, we watch they watch it afterwards. They put out that report. First of all, don't just do the two minute report, do the forty eight minute report and then like go through and let there be actual like uh, an evaluation system that's that's based on like how do refs lose their jobs? You know I, what I mean? I also think And meteorologists. How do meteorologists lose their damn jobs? I think they should um I think they should substitute refs during games. Cause so, so they have one oh. refing crew for the whole game, right? Yeah. Oh, you like, think they get tired? If the players aren't if the players are aren't playing all forty eight minutes, yeah, I think they should switch up the ref crew. Wow, mess up the flow, yeah, of the game from quarter to quarter. I, also I can think tell that none of these rules are going to fly. There yeah. should be like a ref coach too there, <laughs> yeah, and a ref bench, <laughs> like a ref G League, <laughs> like a ref team, yeah, ref and then team. the ref team plays the other team, like a pace car team, but for, for just refs. <laughs> They're out there and doing drills, just blowing the whistle, like whistle <laughs> drills in two lines, just going. Beep, Pointing. I think we're Pointing improving things a lot here. Yeah. No, I think we're turning sports into into entertainment. Yeah, which is what it should be. Which I think is good. Quite frankly. I'm Start, starting with this show, this episode of this show. I've actually had a problem too, and I guess this is just me getting old because I've been saying like, oh, 90s basketball is better. Like this is like my new thing now. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, they're shooting too many threes now. Because I feel like during the playoffs, because there's been so many blowouts, it's just sometimes it's just a matter of if, if one team hits like 20 threes. Yeah. I think there should be a limit. You're only allowed to shoot 23s in a game. Like, what happens? So you actually, how do you, how do you control that? No, but that's part of the game plan. You're going to shoot more threes or you're going to save them in the fourth quarter. You're only allowed to shoot 23s. After that, you can't use the three-point line. And what happens if you shoot one? Like, you, you're, you're just not foul? allowed. You probably get a technical or whatever. Whoa. 23s a game. Well, how, many, how many threes? You have to be does... real selective with your shots. How, how far off is that? How many threes are shot in a game right now? 40, 40 50? to 50. And yeah. that's too much? Damn. Yeah. Yeah, 23. That's kind of cool. I like that a lot, when, actually. Because when the Boston Celtics beat the Milwaukee Bucks in Game 7, yeah. one of their role players, Grant Williams, their strategy was to leave him open. He took 18 threes, and he made seven of them. That was crazy. Yeah. And that was one of the main reasons why that they won. And, like, I feel like I just want to go back to watching just the best players decide the game. How about extra points for a cool dunk? <laughs> yeah. I like that. Like, they have the scorecard card guys there so they right. have like dominique wilkins and yeah he's like that one's worth three points that right. one's worth four points right so you could be trailing, so you could be trailing the... like 15 points in a game yeah 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 and, and, one, and one of your garbage guys just goes for the coolest dunk ever yeah because he could tie the game on that right yeah. or win it 16 point dunk yeah <laughs> how no, many like points that. can you get from a dunk it's completely subjective like no guys the limit because they are the nba is talking a lot about <laughs> Tom Henry, 66 jokes, <laughs> not available on Crave. Because Adam Silver, commissioner, he's been talking about shortening the regular season. I'm not like, mad at that going either. From it, and he's been talking about having a midseason tournament, 
with but some sort of short, stakes. How does that shorten the season, though, if, they, if they're still so playing think, the same amount of games? I think the plan is like, oh, you play like, I don't know, like 56 games, and then maybe the tournament you play like a max of like, I don't know, six games or something like that. But the point is just to get more interest going. But some some of the former players have pushed back against it. Richard Jefferson said that's the whole point of being a professional athlete is that seeing if you're conditioned to play 82 games over the six months. But I think the NBA is really concerned because, especially in basketball, there's a lot of meaningless regular season games. Yeah, like a lot of rest. Even for like, I mean, if I consider you like, you know, for like casual basketball observers, most of them start watching in the playoffs. Yeah. Right. I like having lots of games on, though. Right. I just like that there's games on. I don't even care if they mean anything. Yeah. Just something to look at. <laughs> something yeah, like in some, the background for you. Unless your team's in the finals. Like, the first round of the playoffs is more fun than a conference final to me. You know what I mean? Like, I kind yeah. of petered out. And it's just fun to see every night, like... No, but it's, it's it's been a problem because, I mean, even with Kawhi here, when he was load managing, like, a lot of teams rest their players during the regular season. Ruin my fantasy sports playoffs. Yeah, we don't want to hear about your fantasy team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just tell me off air. Um... <laughs> But no, like, so they are thinking about changes. <laughs> that was harsh. So cold. Really yeah, harsh. Shot me down. Sorry, I'm finally getting comfortable when we have <laughs> six minutes left. I do think that's the correct response to anybody telling you about fantasy sport team, a fantasy yeah. sport team in life. Yeah. Well, this is definitely only interesting to you. Yeah. This is like a dream, telling me about a dream. No, I think... <laughs> yeah, I think, what, what about I think fantasy sports... Thing? No, You're like, can you believe I drafted a... Fantasy sports should be a so very so, private yeah, so thing. Yes, of course I can believe it. <laughs> no, fantasy sports is like your diary. You just keep it to yourself. Yeah. Now. Yeah. All right. Oh, it's like a diary? <laughs> yeah. Fine, I'll stop sharing pages of my diary yeah. with you. No, I'm really sorry. I hope I can still come to a poker game. Yeah, you're still invited, yeah. I right. want to see all the different lights <laughs> tomorrow. Let's just go through the different settings. Maybe that guy will show up again at the end of the game. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The drunk racist that came up yeah, after, we had at a, the end of the we game? Yeah, a racist encounter. That sucked. That yeah. was really unfortunate. It's okay. It happens a lot. Yeah, that was brutal. Um, all right, let's see. This is a part. This is a part of the show where I look at the clock and yep. I see that there's five minutes left. So we do have this clip. I was listening to comedian Mike Malloy, yeah, who who did something for Comedy uh, Central, and he talked about just adult men wearing sports jerseys. So here's the clip. I love sports, but as I've gotten older, there's a lot about sports that's that's pretty silly as you get older, like sports jerseys. That's pretty silly as you get older, because when you're a little kid, you're wearing like your, your hero's jersey that's different. When you're older than the players, now you're just wearing some young boy's work shirt. <laughs> you don't know that boy. Why are you wearing his work clothes? It's strange. We go into a store, we go, hello, good sir, I'll take that young boy's work shirt. What do I have going on tonight? Glad you asked. I'm gonna dress up like this athletic young boy that I admire. The one that I watch on the TV, I'm gonna show up at his job. I'm gonna show up at his place of business, cosplaying as him. What am I gonna do while he works his shift? Well, I'm gonna get hammered. I'm gonna get faced. Barely gonna be able to stand by the end of his shift. And then I'm gonna tell all the boys who work at the baseball factory in the other city what disgusting little pigs I think they are. So me and my dad have something to talk about. So I've been thinking a lot about this. Yeah. Because I own a lot of jerseys. But I'm 37 now. Yeah. And I feel like I've reached the cutoff where I just can't wear jerseys now. I reached that cutoff a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah, where it started to feel like I wasn't pulling it off physically. You know what I mean? Um, right. And then just a also A basketball jersey has never looked right on me because I'm not an athlete. Yeah. Guess what? This is going to surprise you. Here we go. <laughs> you love... I say go ahead and do it. Okay. Be yourself. What? Wear, wear whatever you want. You be yourself, this, this but in that against, lane only? This yeah. goes against everything you've said in the last... And wear any minutes. team's jersey you want. Yeah, that's the other thing, too. I will say I... It's I a, miss wearing Cardinal stuff. I really like the St. Louis Cardinal stuff. I just don't do it anymore. There's you, something about just wearing... You miss it. You, you can go back to it anytime. <laughs> well, that, I'm trying to be vulnerable here, it's all right? It's a personal choice. When you watch that stand-up clip, which is a good little clip, the guy's wearing like, this tie-dye headband. Right. You're like, this guy's saying what we can wear or not. <laughs> so you're saying don't listen. Don't listen to him. I, the one yourself. thing I did think of is that... You know when people get their own name on a jersey? Oh, well, the custom jerseys. You can't do that yeah. past a certain age. I think you just can't do that, period. 
A kid maybe is fun. That's for little kids and like the corniest weddings. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I think for weddings kids, you're going I think for to. kids is okay. <laughs> you know, get like bride and groom on the back. Cool weddings, man. Oh, like hockey fans? Or yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really expensive <laughs> to just get bride and groom on the back of a jersey, though. That's love. That's love. But I'm saying no more jerseys once you hit a certain age. Yeah, the whole idea of Having like said that, I'll probably fandom. show up in a jersey in one of these shows next week. Yeah, I'm looking forward to baseball it. Baseball jerseys are easy to pull off. Hockey's really hard. What's your favorite jersey you own? Favorite jersey that I own? Yeah. Man, man, that's really hard. I was actually recently gifted a Hong Kong national hockey team jersey. Oh, nice. So that's my new favorite. That's cool. That's, that's my cool. new favorite. I respect owning jerseys, but wearing them feels like it's almost like selling the jersey in a way. It can be. You know what I mean? Like if you don't, especially a football jersey with something supposed to have pads under it, it never doesn't look right because you're wearing the work clothes of like the most physically fit people on the planet. There's that as well. Whereas I got like two big hams hanging off my torso. Yeah, I'm, I don't do sleeveless. No, <laughs> I'm wearing a T-shirt under that basketball jersey. Yeah, but sure. then it looks weird. I think it I kind of like that look. Yeah. All right. Tell I'm, tell I'm Norm Powell jerseys. it looks weird. He's Damn. a never nude Norm Powell. You know? Damn. Wrapped it up with a Raptors reference. Well, listen. Appreciate you guys coming in today. Tom Henry. Thanks for having me. NS Esmer. Next week got lots of guest co-hosts. Savannah Hamilton, Blake Murphy, Vivek Jacob, Clement Chu is gonna come on talk about the CCY Classic. Lee Ben, Osman, James Herbert. We're going to draft our favorite 2019 Raptors championship moments. That's how you know we're desperate for content. Thanks again for listening to The Raptor Show. I will talk to you on Monday.